I guess it's supposed to be quality over quantity. I don't really know if I have either. But these are the four bikes I found yesterday, Sunday, September something, 2018. So let's check them out. Is this a good trek? The 800, AKA the mountain track. One thing I can say for this truck is it's insanely clean, as opposed to the Specialized we'll get to in a minute. I don't know if this is really a high-end bike. I mean, to me it looks like kind of a middle of the road thing from the 90s, but it's really pretty straightforward. You got your grip shifters front and rear, which is usually they come in a match set. And then out back here, there's seven speeds. So I guess that makes this a 21 speed mountain bike. And look, it has a Trek saddle on it. And if you notice that the focus is good in this video, it's because I just realized I can touch the screen on the camera and focus on stuff like the Trek logo. So the rims are nothing special, just Weinman 4019, 26 inch, as you'd imagine. The hubs are kind of cool looking. You know, they're not that old fashioned curvy look. They're more like the mid 90s boxy look. Then you got these SLR brakes, which is uh, Shimano Altus. Those work really, really, really well. And the bike has a chromoly seat tube, but I guess that's the only chromoly tube. I think they just do that so they can have like one straight gauge chromoly tube and then put a chromoly decal in the frame so it sounds better. But I don't really expect high end tubing on a bike like this. And then you got your Altus crank set. And these look like pretty small rings, so I don't think this bike was made for the, uh, you know, uphill granny gear set. But I'm sure it'll do the job. And the frame is really, really small. So I don't know if this is necessarily a kid's bike because it has 26 inch wheels, but it's probably for a small adult. And I'd say the last really cool part of this bike is this dark, dark blue and silver fade paint job. The track graphics, the mountain track graphics, not that great, but the paint job's pretty cool. So that's your stunningly clean, excellent condition, if not somewhat run of the mill, Trek Mountain Track 800 mountain bike. Definitely a cool bike to find, and let's check out what we got next. So you know the first thing I thought about when I saw this bike was how easy it would be to make it into a single speed bike, because I'm just, for some reason, still obsessed with single speeds, even though nobody cares about that stuff anymore. But let's zoom out and check out the whole bike. I think you'll agree, this would be a really cool single speed bike. It's a Raleigh Pursuit Mixty. This thing's probably from the 80s based on the overall aesthetic of it and I don't know if I really prefer 80s, 90s, 70s Raleigh's but this one's pretty sweet. Like check it out there's that classic Raleigh head tube badge which is probably made out of aluminum at this point and then on the seat tube it says Raleigh vertically or horizontally if I turn the camera and now of course this is cool too the Raleigh stamped seat stay cap that was tough to get out but i got it out and then your raleigh padded vinyl seat ho hum so the reason they call this bike a mixty isn't the z401 shifter it's these two tubes right here that just go all the way down and they have this nice junction here and then they go all the way to the rear dropouts and the thing I especially like about this particular Mixty and one of the reasons I bought it is that it has upright bars instead of drop bars. Drop bars are kind of annoying. And it has little Diacom brakes, which should do the job, although if I turn this into a single speed, I'm gonna get rid of the back one. And it started life and still exists as a 12 speed bike right now, but maybe we'll do something about that by losing 11 of those speeds. The rims is another reason I really like this bike. The rims are alloy rims, they're not steel. So that makes the bike a lot more lightweight and a lot more desirable. And these are by Weinman, and they're made in Belgium. And the hubs are low flange alloy made by a company called Juyu, and these are the J86. So let me guess that this bike was made in 1986 and call it that. Now to be honest, I'm not sure I'm in love with the black and champagne color scheme, but it is a lugged bike and it does have some interesting details like the black and champagne color scheme and these pursuit graphics are pretty cool too. Also to my surprise this bike has triple butted chromoly main tubes and I don't know on this bike what 
constitutes a main tube, if it's the down tube, the seat tube, if it's the mixty tubes, but anything triple butted chromoly is pretty impressive. Although I would say that little split in the mixty to seat tube tube gusset, that's not all that impressive. Eh, we can overlook that, I guess. Now the pedals are typical road bike cage pedals, and I could probably clean the rust off them, but I don't really like them anyway, so if I do anything with this bike, I'll just get rid of them. And I would say the same goes for these Diacomp levers. They're kind of like comfort upright levers, not really that effective. And the foam rubber grips, they could go too. And most likely what I'll do with this bike is just toss it on Craigslist and see if somebody will buy it as it sits. But if that doesn't happen, maybe I will make it into a single speed, and if I do that, I'll be sure to make a video about it. So stay tuned, or maybe not. I probably watched like half a dozen Steel Panther videos just the other night, so this handlebar tape is totally appropriate. This bike is what they call a Bridgestone Kabuki, and Bridgestone bikes are really popular, but Kabukis maybe not so much, except with me, because I like them way better. The Kabuki has this thing that I like to call the marshmallow lug, which is like this big, ugly, blocky lug that kind of makes the bike hideous, but also gives it a lot of character. See, right here on the down tube junction, there's another one of these big, blocky marshmallow lugs. Did I just coin a term there? Marshmallow lugs? Now, I don't know if you can notice it in the video, but it's obvious that the top tube on this bike is just warped or bent or curved or something. I don't know how that happens, but I think this kind of stuff is endlessly fascinating. Here on the fork, you have another one of those crazy lugs, which makes for a pretty interesting fork crown. Let's look at it from the other direction. Maybe you can't see it too well in this lighting, but this fork crown is just like one big cast glob of metal and if it sounds like I don't like it, then that's not true. I absolutely love it. And here's your Bridgestone Kabuki logo. That's on the down tube. That probably used to be way better looking, but it looks like it's faded a lot with time. So here on the C tube, it says Kabuki tested finest bicycle precision mechanism manufactured Bridgestone, Tokyo, Japan. I think we lose a little in translation, and there's a beautiful Bridgestone Rainbow logo sticker, and down here it says Technar Frame and Fork High Tensile, and then here it says Off the Front, Off the Front, Off the Front, Off the Front. Another one of those rainbow decals, and a Suntour derailleur it looks like, and then down here, what does that say? Gramatan Bicycle Center. That's one hell of a seat tube. There's a lot of information there. The back rim on this bike is totally rusty and the tire has pulled right off of the rim. And the front rim seems to have spent the last 10 years or 20 years or 30 years knee deep in mud. Although I don't think rims have knees technically, it's just a, it's just a saying, knee deep in mud. Now you might ask me why would I pick up a bike like this and there are three reasons. Well, four reasons actually. Reason number one, it's a kabuki. Who doesn't love a Bridgestone Kabuki? Reason number two, it was free because who on earth would pay for this piece of junk? Reason number three, these gorgeous SR SP467 pedals, which I'm sure I can rebuild and reuse. Aren't these things sweet? And reason number four, the former owner of this bike assured me that back in the day, whatever day that might have been, he paid $100 for these gears on the back because they're special racing gears. Now I have no idea what this guy was talking about. These don't look like special racing gears to me, but I'm gonna do some research and find out if maybe that guy was telling the truth. Because if these are special racing gears, then maybe I can sell them on eBay. So that is a crusty, beat up black Bridgestone Kabuki. And just between you and me, it's probably my favorite bike out of these four that I found yesterday. Now last, but maybe least, I don't know. It just happened to be on the last position in the bike rack, so I'm recording it last, that's how it goes. Is what we call a specialized hard rock sport mountain bike. It's a pretty nice bike, right? Now the reason I like this bike so much is because it's absolutely filthy. How did this happen? I think the bike was stored upside down in the dirt. Look at this. Dirt all over the grips, 
and shifters on the left side and even more on the right side. You got dirt on the tires, all crusted up in the knobs, but not in all the knobs, just in the knobs that were improperly stored. Dirt on the stem and top tube. I mean, how do you get your stem and top tube that dirty? But the, the piece de resistance has to be this insanely filthy seat and, and seat post too. Like, how do you get that much dirt on your seat? Aren't you normally sitting on the seat? So this is crazy, this bike. Now, as far as specifications go, the first specification is this big S on the down tube. And that is just such a ridiculously cool looking S. I really like that S. And if we clean off the frame a little right here, we see that the frame is made of enhanced aluminum. Whatever that is, I, I really don't know. But right here you got your big, burly, enhanced aluminum down tube, top tube, gusset, head tube junction, which is just out of this world. I don't know if this is welded by hand or by machine, but that's a lot of beads. Like, that's more beads than a jewelry store. So for rims, you got these 26-inch Alex rims. And I guess Alex rims are good rims. You know, I don't know too much about rims, but I think they're good. There's a Shimano Acera derailleur in the front, and if we go out back past this ridiculously rusty chain, we find an Altus derailleur in the rear. Okay, you know, I, I can't quarrel with any of that stuff. If you look carefully, you see that the seat post clamp is quick release, so that's handy. I mean, you might want to clean some of the dirt off the seat post before you slide it into the frame, but details, details. And this stem is really cool looking. It's just like a big machine block of aluminum. But, you know, that thing just looks like it's gonna get the job done. And then you could take it home and tenderize a steak with it. See, they used to call the GT BMX steak the meat tenderizer. I kind of just ripped off that reference, but it's, it's relevant. Now the fork is this RST Gila T4 suspension fork. And I think this is pronounced Gila. Like the lizard, the Gila monster. And I don't know what that has to do with a mountain bike fork, but it's definitely a cool name for a fork. And then if you go up a little bit, you see that it has quite a bit of suspension travel. You might want to hit that with some WD-40 before you go downhilling, but it looks pretty capable, or it looks like it used to be pretty capable. Now, here you see the front view with that same stem I was looking at earlier, and the big specialized S logo on the head tube, and that burly looking aluminum fork crown. And then to top the package off, because we'll call it a package, we have Tektro brakes, and those handle the stopping duties. Hubs are unbranded. They look like they used to be black anodized, but the anodization faded over time. But maybe they were always brown like this. And the crank is a Truvative ISO Flow. Whatever that means, it looks like a pretty decent crank set. Like a pretty nice solid block of aluminum. So that is your specialized hard rock sport. It's in pretty rough shape, but I think it's salvageable. Although maybe I won't be the person who tries to salvage it. I'm not really into salvaging bikes. I'll let other people salvage them. But I think this is salvageable, so we'll see if we can put it on Craigslist and punt it for a few bucks. Now, as far as money goes, I'm not sure I made any of it in my Sunday of bike hunting yesterday, but money isn't everything, and I did find four pretty cool bikes. So I'm happy, and maybe next Sunday I'll do it again. So until then, from the waterfront in the city of Newburgh, Thanks for watching.